Over the last month, I've been playing around with TensorFlow and Keras, and I've noticed that a lot of the examples are these pre-canned demos that are great for showing you various features, but don't really show you how to use either of the frameworks. I'm hoping to change that without diving too deep into the guts of machine learning. Over the next few episodes, I'm going to show you how to extract features from voice commands, use them to train a deep neural network, and then load that neural network onto a Raspberry Pi using TensorFlow Lite. The idea is that we'll have a Pi constantly listening for audio, and when it hears our wake word, stop, it will toggle a pin. Please note that I'm not in any way a machine learning expert. I'm still learning this as I go, but I wanted to share what I've found so far. If you know of any better methods or techniques, please comment on this video. I'd love to know if you think there's a better way to do things. Most machine learning problems can be broken down into four steps. The first is to collect a bunch of data that you think you'll need. For the wake word or hot word detection, we'll need a bunch of people saying many different words, including our target word. The good news is that Google has already done this for us. We can use their speech commands dataset to make life easier. Next, we need to figure out which features we can use in this data to discern one command from another. After that, we'll build and train a model. Finally, we deploy that model to the Raspberry Pi, where we'll use TensorFlow Lite to help us determine if the target word was spoken in real time. For this episode, I'd like to focus just on feature extraction. Note that you can't really use TensorFlow Lite to train a model. Its main purpose is to make predictions and inferences once you do have a fully trained model. So for these first two episodes, we'll be working with Keras and TensorFlow in our desktop or laptop. In fact, we won't even need TensorFlow until the next episode, and that's because we're going to be focused on just extracting features from audio data. If you have not done so already, I recommend taking a look at my video for installing TensorFlow, Keras, and Jupyter Notebook. We'll be needing them throughout this process. If you have a Google account, you can also head to colab.research.google.com to run Jupyter Notebook in the cloud. There's no setup involved, and it's free. Note that all files are stored on your Google Drive, so it might take some extra work to move very large datasets in and out of your workspace. Also note that loading files into Colab requires different commands than doing it locally on your own machine. To start, we need to download the dataset. Search for the Google Speech Commands dataset. I've had the best luck finding it on the TensorFlow GitHub repo docs page. I'll grab version 0.02, .02 which seems to have worked well for this application. Note that it's a pretty big download, and if you want, you can contribute your own voice to the dataset while you wait. When it's done downloading, unzip the files to somewhere on your computer. I'll keep mine in a datasets folder near my other Python projects. Feel free to browse through the files in the dataset. We'll pick stop as our wake word. If we play them, it's just a collection of recordings from various people saying stop. Stop. You'll want to copy down the absolute path to your speech commands dataset. We'll need it in a minute. If you want to create your own wake word, you'll first need to make a new folder in this dataset. Then, record yourself or other people saying that wake word. You'll want the audio clips to be exactly one second for them to work in the rest of this project. The bigger variety of audio you can get, the better. Ideally, you'll want at least a few hundred different recordings. There's a good bit of code involved in these steps, so I'm going to briefly go over each chunk of code. If you'd like to take your time to go over the code, you can find it in a link in the description. Start a new Jupyter Notebook session using TensorFlow or TensorFlow GPU. In a new notebook, let's import the necessary packages. We'll need OS for dealing with files, Librosa for loading and resampling WAV files, Random for shuffling data, NumPy for dealing with matrices, Matplotlib for graphing things, and Python speech features for extracting audio features. Note that if you do not have one of these packages, you can install it from within Jupyter Notebook by typing exclamation point pip install and the name of the package. From there, we'll use join to construct the path to our dataset. Let's print them out to make sure we can see all of the speech directories. We can pick just a few words to train with, but I'm going to train with all of the words. We'll tell it to recognize only one of the words in a later step. The background noise seems to mess things up for me, so I'm going to leave it off. In theory, you could mix these noises in with the other speech samples to train a model that could automatically filter out various background sounds. Let's print out the number of files in each target directory. Each word has a few thousand samples, as you can see. Let's set a few parameters for the rest of this script. 
We'll want to create features for all of the target words, even if we just pick out one target word later. At the end of the script, we'll have a collection of features, essentially matrices that resemble images, that we'll store into an NPZ file. In practice, you'd want to use all the data you have available. However, it can take hours to extract features and train using 100,000 samples. So I find it much easier to work with a random subset of data. I'll use 10%. This should only be used for initial prototypes to make sure that things are working. You'll want to go back to the full 100% of data when you train your final model. We also want to set aside 10% of our data for cross-validation and 10% for testing. I'll talk about that in a minute. While the WAV files are recorded with a 16 kHz sampling rate, we'll be able to get our final model to run faster if we can use a lower sampling rate, like 8 kHz. We'll set the number of MEL frequency sepstral coefficients to 16 and the length of these MFCCs to 16. I'll also talk about why MFCCs make for good features in a minute, but let's continue with getting raw data from our files. Next, we're going to create a list of all the file names with their full path. This will allow us to load each one and extract the features automatically. In addition, we want to create a Y array. This array holds the ground truth, or actual values. Since this is a supervised learning exercise where we classify signals, we'll need the labels for the signals during the training step. We can arbitrarily assign values, but they should be consistent. We'll assign numbers to the words in alphabetical order. Backward is 0, bed is 1, bird is 2, and so on. Let's print out Y. We see that it's a collection of arrays, and each array is simply the number we assigned to the target word. So, there are 1,664 zeros in this first array, which correspond to the 1,664 samples of people saying the word backward. Similarly, there are 2,014 ones in the next array, which correspond to the samples of bed. We then flatten these arrays so they're just one long list rather than a collection of arrays. The next part is easiest to describe with a diagram. We'll use the Python zip command to link each file name with its associated Y value. There are a lot more files than this, but go with me here. We then randomly shuffle the file names and notice that the Y values stayed linked to the individual names. We can then unzip the two lists to separate file names and Y, but their ordering will remain. Finally, we will take the first 10% of the data and set it aside to be our cross-validation set. This will be useful in testing the model to see how well it performs during training. Then, we set aside another 10% as test data. We should only test with this data when we're done tweaking the model and hyperparameters. We leave the rest of the data alone to be used as training data. Note that cross-validation and test sets can be anywhere from 10-20% to of the data each. Feel free to pick something in that range depending on how much total data you have available. Back to our code, we can see how those steps were accomplished in these cells. We zip the file names and Y array together, shuffle them, and unzip them. Because I don't want to take a lot of time training a prototype model, I'm going to only work with 10% of the total data for now. It's really important that you come back to this and use all the data when you're ready to train your model for testing and deployment. Here, we break apart the file name list and ground truth list into separate validation, test, and training sets. We're now ready to extract features from these WAV files. When it comes to feature extraction, it's a good idea to do some research on what other people have done. This is where I found out about MFCCs and, from what I read, transforming audio into the MEL frequency sepstral coefficients seems to be very popular in machine learning for speech recognition. To calculate the MFCCs, we take a small time slice of our audio waveform and compute the fast Fourier transform. This gives us the amount of power at each frequency of that time slice. Then we apply a set of filters to that fast Fourier transform spectrum. Note that these filters are spaced in such a way to represent how humans perceive sound. Generally, the filters are linearly spaced below 1 kHz and logarithmically spaced above 1 kHz. We then sum up the power found in each filter to get a number representing the energy under that filter. Note that most implementations of MFCC use 26 filters for voice. From there, you'll want to compute the log of each value in the vector. After that, we compute the discrete cosine transform of the 26 log filter bank energies. 
The DCT works much like the Fourier transform, but operates on real valued signals and does a better job of emphasizing the low frequency components. If you start with 26 elements in the filter bank energies, you should end up with 26 sepstral coefficients. The lower coefficients, like elements 0, 1, and 2, contain information about the general shape of the audio spectrum in that time slice. As you go up in the coefficients, you start to get into the finer details of the audio spectrum. For speech analysis, you normally want to throw away the zeroth element and anything after element 13. Above the 13th element is usually noise and audio artifacts that don't correlate to speech much. So, we've computed the MFCCs for the first time slice of our audio file. Notice that I've flipped the vector around so that the first element is on the bottom and the highest element is on the top. You'll see why in a second. Also, after some testing, I found that for the model I plan to train, having 16 elements seems to work the best. Note that this might not be universally true. You might be able to get good or better accuracy with a different neural network and only 12 elements. The point is to keep trying and experimenting with things to find something that works. We then slide our window over a bit on the waveform and compute the MFCCs from that time slice. Keep going until we've obtained all the MFCCs for the whole waveform. At this point, we have a two-dimensional array of MFCC values. One way to view this matrix is as an image. The x-axis here is the time. Each column of pixels corresponds to one of the time slices we took. The y-axis is the MFCCs, so there should be 16 total rows. The colors give us a relative representation of the value of each coefficient. The bottom row, or zeroth coefficient, is dark because they're all large negative values compared to the rest. This is an example of MFCCs computed from someone saying the word stop. If we compute the MFCCs for someone saying zero, you can see how it produces a slightly different image. It might be tough for a human to see these differences, but a machine can do that quite easily. So we will actually use a neural network that classifies images to help discern these different wake words. If you'd like to learn more about MFCCs, check out this post on the Practical Cryptography site. In fact, this post was written by the same author of the Python speech features library that we'll be using. Let's go back to our code. We'll make a quick function that loads the wave file from a given path and resamples it to 8,000 samples per second. We'll use Librosa to do that since it can load and resample in one line of code. Then we'll use the Python speech features MFCC function to create a set of MFCCs from that waveform. Feel free to play around with these parameters. I wanted to keep the number of MFCC sets produced low, so I widened the window from 25 milliseconds to 256 milliseconds. I also increased the distance between the windows to 50 milliseconds. We want the first 16 MFCCs from this and we'll use the default 26 filters. The number of samples to use for the FFT is dependent on the size of the window, so I had to increase that to 2048 from the default 512. I found that the pre-emphasis filter didn't make too much of a difference, so I disabled it. You might have better luck with it on. You can supposedly add a liftering operation on the final coefficients to help make them more robust against noise. That's one more operation that I didn't need in this basic prototype, so I disabled liftering. Since the zero-width elements of the MFCCs are often thrown out, this function can offer to replace them with something that gives total energy in that frame. Once again, I didn't find that necessary with this prototype, so I turned that feature off. Finally, applying a window function like a hamming or hanning window can help prevent the fast Fourier transform operation produce unwanted artifacts in the higher frequencies. Let's test this on some files. I'll take the first 500 samples from the training set and display the shape of their MFCC matrices. Each audio file should produce 16 sets of 16 coefficients. As you can see, a few of the audio files seem to have been corrupted or not fully one second long. If we count these up and divide by 500, we can conclude that about 10% of all the audio samples have this problem. Let's test a few of these. Here's a quick script that uses the PlaySound library to play the audio sample, display the MFCCs and resulting image, as well as give us what word it's supposed to be. After testing a number of these, I found that many of them were cut off or completely inaudible. 
there are a number of ways to deal with bad data in a set with machine learning. If the sample isn't quite long enough, you can append values that look like data found within the sample, something that approximates silence or white noise. You can also just drop the sample completely, which is the easiest thing to do. Since only about 10% of the samples are problematic for this data set, I'm just going to drop any of them that don't produce exactly 16 sets of coefficients. So we write another function that does exactly that. It makes sure the file ends with .wave, calculates the MFCCs, and drops the sample and corresponding label from the Y vectors if it's not long enough. We then run that function on each of our training, validation, and test sets. This might take a few minutes, so go make a sandwich or something. When it's done, you can see that it removed about 10% of samples from the set, which I'm okay with. Finally, we use the numpy saveZ function to store these massive arrays into an npz file. This will allow us to load our saved features and corresponding labels in a future step when we're ready to do the actual machine learning. To load the features, we just call numpy.load and give it the location of the file. We can then list out the available arrays and see the number of samples in each one. If we print the Y validation set, you can see all of the labels that we have stored in that set. Next time, we'll use these stored features to train a neural network that will classify our wake word from all the other words. Remember that this isn't a very robust model, it's just something to get us started. Please subscribe if you'd like to keep up with these videos, and happy hacking! <laughs>